An ordinary meeting is Children Town Council, which is held on the 12th of June 2017 in the Council Chambers, City Hall Square, Children, at 6.30. Item 1, public notice of, of meeting. Public not notice of the meeting has been given in accordance with Schedule 12, Paragraph 10, Point 2 of the Local Government Act, 1972. Item 2, apologies of absence. Yeah, we've got any more? I think that's all we need. Item three, public question time. No questions, Chair. Thank you. Item four, declaration of interest. Yeah. Nothing declared? That's lovely, thank you. Item five, to approve the minutes of the annual meeting of the Town Council held on the 15th of May, 2017. Copy it out. <coughs> Thank you. Item six, to read and take as read, approve and adopt or otherwise deal with the minutes of the proceeding of the committee here to annexed. A, services and amenities. And B, resources. Item seven, police report. Thank you, Chair. Unfortunately, the, the police could not attend the meeting tonight, but I have had notice that for the next meeting, um, after writing um, to the police, that there will be Inspector Sarah Honeyman and our new neighbourhood sergeant Andy Boyle will be attending the meeting on the 17th of July to take questions from members. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'm, I'm, I welcome that. Yep. that uh, we're going to get this visit. Um, I'm disappointed that the police are not here. Obviously, they must have more important things to do. But if you look at the report for May, it's, it's no better. With you know, 22% increase in uh, crime crime rates, and, and if you look at the harass assaults, um, even though seven were harassment, which has been added in, that still leaves 34 assaults. Uh, for April 2017. I mean, you know, we should be really concerned. So these are the things that we should uh, be asking when we get the visit yeah, as to whether they can explain or what they're going to do about this. Uh, I've made uh, Inspector Hunnan and the new neighbourhood sergeant aware of the concerns uh, for the next meeting. Thank you. 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 Item 8, Children Town Council so Social Media Policy to adopt and to approve and adopt the social media policy. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've presented to councillors a draft social media policy um, put forward to yourselves, outlining um, some guidance for officers and employees and the council itself. It is a draft policy. Uh, this is brought in because I'm quite aware that uh, with new councillors coming on board and the and, and, uh, resident councillors that um, you will be using social media uh, as a means of forward to uh, outline uh, information that you want to give to residents of Shield. So it's a draft policy that's being presented to members. Well, we defer it item to the next meeting with my information from the right. Thanks. Thank you. Item 9, annual return 2016-17 to consider report of the town fair. Yes, Chair. Again, every year we've got to present um, our annual return that has to be signed by yourself as Chair. And the annual return has to be approved by the end of June uh, and members are being presented with the copies. Uh, it's the annual government statement on page 2, the accountant statement 1617 page 3, external auditor certificate report page 4 and the annual internal report page 5. Also outlined in the report uh, to members is the balances that are held by the Town Council as of the 31st of March 2017. In addition, this year we've, got, we've presented the Town Council's asset register. Um, it is recommended to members that we approve the annual government statement detailed in page 2 of the annual return, approve the accountant statements detailed in page 3 of the annual return, and approve the asset register detailed in the appendix to the report. Move to recommend it. Okay. 
Item 10, Accounts and Payroll Assistance to receive the report and approve the action of the Town Clerk. Thank you, Chair. The clerk of the report is to advise members of the resignation of our accounts and payroll assistant. Um, the um, assistant advised that she be leaving the Town Council on the 7th of June. She's actually extended that to help us out a little bit with our accounts and won't be leaving until next week. The job vacancy has been advertised through various uh, media uh, and through the job match, um, uh, the job match and job centre. Um, we've now received um, applications and uh, applicants have been invited to interview which will be held um, on the, the 29th of June. Um, in, in the meantime, we need to keep our accounts now, obviously our payroll, we need somebody to operate our payroll system. So I have taken um, and interviewed a temporary person um, who, who does this um, for her employment and she will be uh, coming on a temporary basis on the 26th of June uh, until we can appoint um, an appropriate person to the post. It's recommended that we note the report and that the action taken to, by the town clerk to appoint a temporary person um, be agreed. I'm already recommended. Yep. Can, I, can I just add, can we place our thanks on record for the work that's been done and which was uh, bad by also, thanks for deferring her leaving the council's help as well. I think it worked both ways. <laughs> <laughs> Item 11, Annual Report 2016 and Performance Plan 2017. Report of the Town Clerk to follow. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Presents is the Annual Report 2016 and Performance Plan 2017. It's no longer a provision that we need to present these reports, for in, but we still produce these report, reports uh, for members to view. Um, we also will be putting this online on our website and through any other social media that we have. Um, we will publish copies of the report for any members of the to pick up as well. Uh, consequently, I present the report to yourselves and recommend that the report and plan be approved and adopted. Uh, I'd, like, I'd like to comment uh, on page 18, then, on chair, under the conclusions of being drawn. And this is important. Going back some years, we were encouraged by central government to, um, or, or at least the major authorities were encouraged to devolve uh, certain powers down to town and parish councils to those who thought they could do the job better or wish to take it on. For example, certain grass cutting and uh, things to do with winter snow clearance and various things and this authority was one of the interested parties to do it and the reason for that was many years ago we took on a job of, for the county council the, the county council was doing we took it on and they put a price in for it around about 24,000 if my memory doesn't fail me we managed to do it for 18,000 which they gave us 24 which points to the fact that we can do it much better and make a little bit of profit on the side. However, this page here, if you look at it, makes a good point. It says that the Localism Act could provide opportunities for an enhanced service delivery role for the Town Council and consequently the Council will need to consider in the future services that could be appropriate for delivery by this Council to ensure that they are as responsible, responsive as possible to the needs of the local authority. The unfortunate thing is if there's one of those that we may want to do, but we may want to enhance it and, and, and you can borrow some more money, and it goes down to the last column off the end where it said, in addition, the possible extension of the local referendum provisions for excessive council tax increases. So keep those two things in mind, and then on the th one to third column down, it points out that this town council is no longer financially independent and we rely on the county council continuing to redistribute to the town council the proportion of the support scheme grant that relates to the preset. So we're hamstrung, in other words. They're wanting, on the one hand, they're saying, you know, they're encouraging you to ask for devolved things down that we believe, I believe, that we can do better, more efficiently than the county. And what I'd like to see us doing it. But on the other hand, we're hamstrung because financially we don't know what's coming next year and I think it's a ridiculous situation. I can only hope that what happened over the weekend <coughs> might relax some of this. Maybe I'm an eternal optimist. 
But maybe some of this may be relaxed from now on, and we might get some common sense comes. I hope so. I, I think, councillor, um, as you know, um, once over there was a payment, there's no payment now that will be do devolved down to the parish and town councils. But we do work in partnership uh, with the town, uh, with the Durham County Council with our maintenance, winter maintenance yeah, program. We act quickly with the Durham County Council um, when we snow clear. We have an arrangement where we fill the uh, grip bins immediately. Um, we act with them to clear the snow from the main streets and the main areas. So we act quite quickly in children. I know not all parish and town councils are part of the win winter maintenance program, but we are. We also work quite well in other areas, such as um, what we're implementing in the park area with fixed um, uh, penalty fine, fines down in the park area. So we are working in partnership to improve our service um, in different areas. It's just working in a different way. In saying that, you know, we, we can go and apply to the county hall for things to do, yeah. if we can do it. I think one thing that may look into in the future is actually get into living and actually, if we can cut their grass, because the way things are going at the moment, we're, we have more complaints about people cutting grass, won't get bits get oh, cut. Well, uh, they can't cut that because that's county down. We can't cut that because that's children. This we can't cut that because it's living. And the thing is, they're not, it's not all together. Where if our lads did it, they cut the, the, the grass all together. And I think it's it worth looking in and saying if we can do something like that. Because that's what we, the biggest complaint I'm getting is about the grass cutting. Well, can I just come back on that? W one of the reasons when living took over from Setchfield to the housing, there was a worry that they didn't hand over all the open space bits. And there's a reason for that, because we were suspicious that later on they might come back and say, we want to build an extra couple of houses on there. We said, oh no. So he handed the housing over, but the other bits were kept. But some of the little bits were still belonged to them. It was complicated. And this is what's got us into this situation to a certain extent. But I agree with Peter. It is, it is wrong. I'll get this. I'll have the same, you know. Yeah, did just about the con living decided to go <coughs> away from Durham County Council direct services and uh, put it out for tender and decided to go with another company it was obviously with cheaper. Yeah. And it, it, both the council I agree with both the councils. It's caused major problems on our social housing yeah. stock within the town. And I believe living are now revisiting exactly what they're doing. But in the meantime, our people living children have a patchwork of shall we say lawns where they should have a green lawn. Yeah where I live in the Association Street is quite plain. The gentleman gets it cut by Durham County Council. Next door, get cut by living contractors. It's that high. And that's what you get when people decide to go out for tender and take, and don't look at the bigger picture and agree. We really need to, shall we say, make representations to living about that. Mm -hmm. I, I, through you, Chair, yeah. I think this was mentioned at some meetings that we have attended with the living representatives where you mm -hmm. are blind council Quinn about this. Yeah. That uh, was taken on board by Living and uh, was conveyed to their new contractors. I think slowly that started to filter through. I think all the land that they had to cut didn't, the information didn't get through to the contractors, so land was being left. But I think that slowly, um, the, the situation is improving slowly, but they are uh, quite aware of that. But, but sometimes the problems we have, we all cut at different cycles at different times, so there may be a bit of it, more of a coordination in that. We probably cut more frequently than Durham County Council cut. Um, so that's our problem. But the, the living problem, I understand, is uh, improving. Thank you. Appreciations and congratulations to receive the schedule of the mayoral engagements. On the, the mayor's engagement, mm -hmm. uh, some of the people work on the, on the, on the council at the time. The fish farm, Council Huntington and Council Walker were at the time when we actually sold the land down there. And I went down with the, the, mayor, the mayor, and I tell you what, what a beautiful place it is. You go down and have a look, Gary. Uh, honestly, it opened my eyes what they've done down there. It is absolutely brilliant. That is a hidden gem in children. If anybody has a chance, actually go down and have a look. It's absolutely brilliant. 
She's go along and have a look though, Alan, on the screen. It's like a little game, you know, at the top end of the show. Thank you very much for that. Excuse me, good evening ladies and gentlemen, excuse the glasses, I don't know where my other ones are going, I've had to borrow these, I think the dog's pinched them, he has. <laughs> right, uh, the major service can meet me tonight, apologies for absence, apologies for cancelling yeah. again, yeah. declaration of interest, Civic Loan Finance Report to consider the report for the month of May 2017. Yes, Chair. Um, for the Civic Loan Performance Report for the month of May, fast sales exceeded budget, but the meal sales fell below budget. However, the expenditure was below budget, resulting in an underspend for the month of in excess of 3000 Overall, for the year to the end of May, the City Hall has an underspend on the budget by slightly over 11000 before far and mail sales exceed the budget for the year to date. Mm -hmm. Item for the Civic Hall update to consider the report of Civic Hall Manager. Good evening. Mm -hmm. uh, just touching on the training figures the town folks just talked about. Trading's going along sort of where we projected it, so we're quite happy with that. And for the foreseeable future, we see that sort of being sustained. Um, fingers crossed, anyway. Going on to my report, in the budget uh, for 217 218, we agreed uh, to look in for putting the funding for kitchen ovens and function suite furniture. It's taken a couple of months to get all these cost things together, but we now have three sets of cost things here. Um, broken down into two key areas, the first area being the kitchen equipment and the second area um, function suite furniture. In respect to the kitchen equipment, we have quotation A, quotation B and quotation C. We are looking at installing a rationale self-cooking centre, which is all singing, all dancing, state-of-the-art cooker, uh, and a heavy-duty deep-fat fryer. These two pieces of equipment will be replacing two obsolete and old pieces of equipment, one of which is 15 plus years and one of which is 10 plus years. So that we've had our sort of money's worth out of them. It's now time to invest. Looking at the quotation prices, quotation C is actually the cheapest by uh, just over £100, but I'm recommending quotation A. Quotation A is by a local company that's serviced the Civic for the last 10 years. So they know the sort of nuts and bolts and the pitfalls of the kitchen, of which there are many. Quotation C is a more nationalised company and it's not a fixed price that is subject to a further survey, so that could throw up extra costs. So in respect to the kitchen ovens, I'm recommending quotation A. The replacement furniture and the function suites, it worked out easier to break down the tables and the chairs to two separate quotations joint quotations worked out more expensive. With respect to the folding tables, um, we're going for a lighter, more sort of flexible table with folding legs rather than the fixed furniture we've got over there for pure ease of manoeuvrability, etc. My recommendation is quotation A, which is the cheapest quotation. Paul, is there any, sorry Mr. Chair, is there any um, budget for the um, the stacking of the tables and things and the chairs. Yes, we've costed in a trolley as well. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, we've costed in, in fact, two quality, top, two trolleys, one for the table and one for the chairs to make the uh, sort of manoeuvrability for the staff easy. One of the recommendations on the three quarts we've got. But I've done a good job in the tent. I haven't done a third one. It's going to come to all that. Yes, he hasn't finished yet. It's all that. Thank you very much. Uh, Quotation <laughs> for the stacking banquet chairs. Again, there's three quotes, and I recommend quotation B, which is the cheapest quotation. Um, so, is there it. any resale value in the other ones as well? Scrap. Yeah, the the, the uh, Zanussi oven that's over 15 years old is all split on the base plate. Um, 
Um, the other one we're keeping until it actually dies, but it's, it's not fit for purpose. We're just using it for steaming rather than as an oven, so that would just see how it's done for yeah, next year or so. And it's left, basically, yeah. um, So that concludes my three recommendations on the <coughs> furniture and the kitchen equipment. Would you recommend it? Yeah, they would take it. You know, got to do it. Yeah, yeah. The finance is shared. I don't like to create higher prices. Uh, I worked it out in a different year. You can borrow from the balances £14,193.72. I've done what we got in the budget for this year, £5,469.36. That comes to the total that we've quoted. And to pay it back next year, pay £5,000. The following year, £5,000. And finish it up in the fourth year, £4,193.72. If we paid higher purses at five times four hundred and sixty nine thirty six would have come to twenty seven thousand three hundred and forty six. It saved a tiny bit of money. So I recommend. Anybody else? Anybody else want to say anything about it? So what what the recommendation is that we use some of our reserves to uh, <coughs> pay this off rather than paying Long term amounts of money. Is that, is that what you're saying? Well, we, we pay out of the balances the first amount, the full amount, right? Yeah. And then pay it back over three years. Into the balances? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it seems reasonable to me, providing the council think they can do that, yeah. yeah. Called prudent accountancy. All agreed? Yeah. 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 Okay. Right, can you tell me uh, plan application? Here, to just play two sets of emulation, individual lettering, uh, one non emulation set of lettering, uh, one, I already bought two posters, t uh, two number lanterns, to replace the floodlight of the Royal George <coughs> Main Street, children. Anybody? I think they're spending money on cleaning it up. Which is a good, which can be a good thing in really good ones. Some of the places you shouldn't do want to be clean up. Well, as a supporter of Real Ale, Chairman, it's all Sorry? as a supporter of Real Ale, it's good news to me. Yeah. And it's a pub in our town centre and it yeah. needs some, you know. I mean, it's an entrance as you come in, Gary, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I welcome the fact someone's spending a bit of money and trying to make it go over because it's right in the, in the town centre and it can only help. Yeah. Oh, there's another one. We've, we've got another two uh, further planned applications that just come in this morning. As I say, it's a quick turnaround, so we need to put them to the meeting tonight. Uh, one is to propose industrial building and detached uh, garage on one unit, and two, an industrial estate, but an industrial estate shield is submitted by Alan Green. Must be down east, this must be extended now. Bays are a two story side extension from a, of a garage into a habitable space, nine Richmond Cross Children. Right. County Durham plan, planning decisions A, B, C, D, E, F, G are all approved. And seven Durham Brass Festival children event to come to the report of the town clerk. Thank you, Chair. Um, this is an item that I'm putting in front of members for, for their information. I've been informed informally, um, but I know this is going to go through the um, Bishop Auckland Children Early Action Partnership regarding bringing the Big Brass Bath Bash yeah. Festival. Well, well, well. Uh, back to Shildon again uh, in 2017 on the 12th of July. Um, it, it's been a successful event that's been held in Hackwood Park during 2015 and 16. <coughs> um, and we have from the Shildon City Hall provided the bar facilities for this and the catering has been provided um, by a local company within um, Shildon. Um, the event again is organised by Durham County Council and I believe that the funding is going to be from uh, the neighbourhood budget funding um, of um, councillors and that's in the process uh, of going through. Um, I would recommend that permission be granted for the big brass bash event to be held in Hackford Park on Wednesday the 12th of July. That's subject to the successful funding application going through Durham County Council 
and that if possible and they want us that the children city hall provide the bar facilities within the park area if that's possible um, for us to do well uh, the work has been there for the last two years has been a good, good night well, the weather's been good and, and it's like the kids have thoroughly enjoyed themselves. Yeah. And I think this again, we do support this event in terms of support from Durham County Council uh, during the days past setting up and obviously when, when the event comes down and we support that by cleaning the area and little bit. So it's again working in partnership. Yes, Councillor Quinn. Yes, I would, uh, I would definitely recommend this um, event taking place. Um, the three county councillors, we have all jointly put in um, the bid for the funding of the, the, the last bash. Um, it was, it's been very well um, patronised by the town folks uh, over the last couple of years. And it's been very nice to see other people coming into the town and, and viewing what an absolute jewel we have got in children and um, so I do hope that everybody will take the time and pop down themselves if it goes ahead. Any comments? I'd just like to support that. I haven't attended them previously. I think it's an excellent event. It really brings the park to life for the for the evening and the quality of entertainment you wouldn't get it otherwise. You th you first of all, you think of it as being like a brass band, as in the old fashioned brass mm -hmm. band, but it certainly no, isn't. No, you brought not. it up into the 21st century, yeah, and it's it definitely, fun. definitely yeah. worth going to yeah. see. Yeah. Really Young and people. old. Definitely. And I think as well that um, there's workshops provided for school children um, beforehand, uh, maybe. <laughs> That's maybe to sort <laughs> out. There, there was previously. There was. Okay, gentlemen. Yeah. 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 Sorry, yes. Yeah. 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 Is it one of the plans for the rest house on that evening? Because the first year was an open bar, the second year was a semi private function. What we planned to do with it no. this year? No, it's it's always mixed up. Within the rest house, yeah. uh, in previous years, it's always been uh, open. It's just that we've housed the bar uh, from the rest house. It pre it's never been a private function in there. Mm. People were allowed to come in and purchase their alcohol. Of course, mm. people were bringing alcohol along as well. Um, this year, uh, we won't be serving, I don't believe we'll be serving um, alcohol from the rest house, but we will be sorting a pop-up bar. No, I think, I think, I think you probably ought to go, when, when they did a, I think the mayor did a do there, oh, was yes. a tea oh, party, yeah, was a that's, that's what, I think that's what you got mixed up, was she, yeah, yeah. she did a tea party, that's yeah, why. Yeah, that was an afternoon. That, 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 that was an afternoon. That was a private function. Okay, that was a private function. Yeah. Okay, gentlemen. Thank you very much, ladies. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening everyone and welcome to Shun Town Council Resource Committee Monday the yeah. Apology for access please. Thank you. Declarations of interest. Budget control statement. Consider the budget control statement of May 2017. Copy to follow. Uh, yes, Chair. Yes. Uh, members will have in front of them the budget control statement for the year for the year to the end of May, which indicates an underspend in excess of twenty thousand. There's no areas of concern at present shown within the budget. Um, the budget only obviously only represents um, two months of the financial year and at present we have uh, a 20,000 to spend uh, with over 11,000 that, that's attrib attributable to the Shilka City Hall. Um, as we go along with the budget um, we also try and profile uh, the budget as best as possible so we still profile in that at present but as mentioned previously um, I don't have a, um, an accounts clerk um, from next week so um, we will do the best I can to, to bring the um, July accounts as best as possible. We, we outlined at the last meeting that there was a little bit issue with changing of staff and cases just to reaffirm that. Thanks for that idea, Tracy. Item four, grant aid to consider the report of the town clerk, please. Yes, Chair, we see the grant aid application from the Children Ignite Youth Group, and this is to take part um, in a, a, a litter pick that's going to be happening 
on the community, uh, community woodland that sits at Spout Lane. We've been requested by um, the, um, the company that actually um, looks after the woodland if the young people would like to do a community litter pick. Um, the um, grant is to uh, provide transport and refreshments uh, for all the young people that's uh, involved in the litter pick on that day. What would that be? Secondly, no yeah. should the United Youth Group receive £50? <laughs> Item 5, accounts. To examine the accounts of waiting payment accounts paid in advance from the month of May 2017. Schedule to follow, which you've all had for seven or eight years. No questions on the accounts? Like I say, I keep saying in the meeting, if you have any issues, please make sure you get all the tracing on myself and so we can uh, have you a question and answer to your question at any time. If Thank members you. want to see individual invoices, they are um, tabled. Thank you, Tracy. Item 6, Citizens Advice, County Dunno Outreach Service, mm -hmm. to receive update from the Town Clerk, please. Thank you, Chair. The purpose of the report is, is mainly to update members uh, of the benefits of the Citizens Advice Outreach Service that the Town Council um, funds within, the, within children at the Town Council offices. And I thought it, it uh, was interesting to know the statistics uh, of the people coming through uh, this service here and, and obviously what gains the residents have. And as you can see in the report that I was given uh, via um, Citizens Advice, uh, the amount um, the financial gains that the residents of children um, have due to the town council funding this vital service within children. So I thought that would be a uh, uh, good interest. Gary? Yes, Chairman. It, it, this is very interesting. We, This council, to its credit, have always supported the Citizen Advice Bureau. I've always held the view that it should be financed through the uh, through the local tax. And, and it, it, but anyway, that's by the by. It's interesting to note the amount of money that's been retrieved here for people who genuinely should have it. This isn't something they shouldn't have, this is what they should have. Every year there's a set amount of money set aside by a central government. They have a rough idea of the amount of people that should have these benefits. And yet at the end of the year there's a big lump there that goes back into the treasury coffers. So there's people out there either don't know, they're too timid, or a thousand different reasons why they don't get this information. This is vital this service, it should be strengthened and uh, it's up to our credit to see the amount of money that's actually reached the people who, who should have it and deserve it and well, I hope we continue to support it Chair. Whatever the political maker of this council is having and we've always supported, first of all it was Sedgefield Citizens Advice Bureau then there was a realignment and it became Citizens Advice County Durham and we've always supported it and there's still a vital need for this service and I can only say what Gary said there outlined, benefit and tax credits over half a million pounds. Yeah. And there's still millions of pounds not clear. Councillor Quinn? Can I just recommend that uh, we perhaps um, advertise it again in the prior year, um, just to remind people that the service is available and where they can actually come and get um, the information? Uh, normally, citizens advice, they, they will advertise it. I, I, I put the dates out through our social media as well, but I certainly will send a, a list of the dates up to the local community newspaper again on behalf of citizens advice. But I just th thought it was vital that members know this information for the amount that uh, we fund, and it is vital because without that funding, these people would have to travel outside the area, uh, which they can't afford the transport or the telephone calls to make because <coughs> we also offer that service from here um, when people don't have enough credit on the phone they come to here at the town council offices and use our facilities to actually phone uh, so again we're working in, uh, in partnership with other people to help the residents of Sheldon. Sure. Uh, could we ask that in uh, future meetings that we have both the, the number of unique clients and also the number of repeat clients just so we have a fuller picture? Put right. one unique client, so you want the other clients. Repeat. Yeah, yeah, if possible. Wait, wait. Can, I, can I just come in there, Danny? Yeah. During 2067, 101 unique clients attending the bi-weekly sessions. These were new clients. Right. So we need the information below that. Uh -huh. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, I'll try not to. Now, I'm not sure the way that they record their statistics, um, but I'll certainly will uh, email and try and find their information out. Thank you. Thanks for that question. Mm -hmm. No more questions on that item? Seven, County Durham and Cleveland County Training Partnership training courses to consider the report and members to inform the town clerk if they wish to attend any of the training courses. 
Again, Chair, this is reported for the information of members. It's outlining, outlining the training sessions that are available for new councillors and returning councillors. There is councillor training, uh, which covers the roles and responsibilities, powers and duties, budgets, management meetings. Um, one training is going to be held on the 25th of July um, at this side of Barnet Castle. And again, the same training will be held on the 26th of July uh, at Peterloo. So there's two chances to go on to the council of training. There's also um, chairmanship training uh, for all our wooden chairmen out there. And this is an excellent training that I think people that you know, want to be chair in the future that need to attend. Again, the training is on the 31st of July at Peterlee and 1st of August uh, this side at Barnet Castle. The cost per councillor is £30 and obviously within the town council budget uh, we have a training budget uh, that would uh, cover the costs. There are also free training available for a North East uh, regional event. It may not be applicable to us because we don't run village halls but there, there is a training uh, if anybody's interested in spending that and that's a free training um, course. Uh, in collaboration with the Tees Valley Road Community Council, during Community Action and Community Action Northumberland. We also have coming up a code of conduct training that advise every member of the council to, to attend. Um, this will be held, uh, it was a provisional date of Tuesday the 3rd of October at County Hall from 6 to 8 30 pm. Depend how many you want to go, you want to go individually or I could arrange for some community transport. So we, we, we can sort that out, but I would encourage everybody to go along to this training and this training will cover again aspects of social media. So I, I just so for the, the first two training, which is the training, the council training and the chairmanship training, I'd really like to know after the meeting or certainly uh, within this week <coughs> if uh, councillors would like to email Julie to say that they want to attend because uh, numbers are limited and I really want to get people booked in um, for this training if they want to attend. Any questions on it? Yeah. Peter Quinn? The, the, the last uh, finance meeting we had, I asked uh, <coughs> Michael if he could try and find out if he can try and arrange for, 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 for all of us to have it in here on a night time because people committed to work and everything and Michael said he would look into it but obviously we've never anything come back um because I thought well because it's like all of us are here you mm -hmm. said there's 15 people I asked Michael mm -hmm. and he said it'd be a cost would you there would be a cost to that and it would yeah. certainly be more than 30 pounds but as I said these training courses have been provided <coughs> by the county Durham um, association uh, and they're there now be ready to go mm -hmm. um, but certainly if you want to go the other way I can certainly um, look at the cost but I don't want you to miss this one just in mm -hmm. case the costs are uh, on the other one but it's it entirely up to members what you it decide. It would be great if it was here it would be even better if it was on an evening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind if it was still by the castle. Yeah. On the <laughs> the, the, these are, um, I, I question that, these are obviously day events because it takes all day to do. Mm. Yeah, I'm honestly. I'm talking about it. I think what was discussed with the, 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 these uh, data set in stone by the training department both to all on our behalf and I endorse the clerk's words that they're very 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 good courses and you learn a lot and we're still learning and I recommend it if you can go along it might be we explore further training here with Peter Quinn especially because especially the, the code of conduct one yeah, it might be so I might think that one that well, the, the, co the code of conduct one is an evening one and that's 6 to 8 30 so that should be able to be accommodated and obviously that's free training by Durham County Council so yeah. we like to take advantage of free training mm -hmm. Okay, make my report. Thank you. That uh, closes the resource committee to do the report. Thank you for not glad to say you have more.